You didn't ask for it, but here it is. Three more rock grooves because rock is amazing. I don't need to explain that, but it's just the truth. Now, in the previous three rock grooves video, I explained how you can make your groove sound more rocky. I won't do that here. Check out the first video if you want to know that. So we're gonna go through three grooves, aggressively getting more advanced. Let's go. Groove one, three, four. I might go as far to say this is an essential rock groove. This is one you really, really want to know. The theory behind this groove is actually dead simple. We're only dealing with eighth notes. As you practice this, you might want to try having your hi-hats a bit more trashy, just a little bit more open. I'm not because the sound of practicing that would test my sanity. Two and four on the snare drum. So you end up with one, two, three, four. Where the counting comes in is with the eighth notes because we are playing a bass drum on every eighth note that doesn't have a snare drum. So you end up with one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Some people might find it easier when they try and practice this to actually play eighth notes on the hi-hat as well. and two and three and four and but if you're doing more of an open hi-hat long extended trashy thing then keep it to quarter notes because it'll probably sound a bit better so there's that on to groove two all right yo it's time to get your rock shuffle on one two This one's a doozy. It's one of my favorite grooves to use and also embellish on later down the line. Shuffles can get pretty boring, but this one keeps things a little bit more fresh. So shuffle means we're dealing with triplets. And what's happening is technically just hand to hand triplets, right, left, right, left, right, left. You're gonna put that right hand onto the ride bell. So not this bit, the belly bit. And you wanna hit that with not the tip of the stick, but the shoulder of the stick. So you go for a side on whack. So get that going first. Tri, pa, let, tri, pa, let, tri, pa, let, tri, pa, let. If you say it, you can play it. So try and say it as you're practicing it. And now you might be here wondering, okay, this doesn't really sound like anything in particular. This is where the magic of dynamics comes in. Your right hand stays the same volume the whole time, nice and accented. But now you're gonna drop the volume of your left hand. Keep counting the triplet. Triplet, 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 triplet. Triplet, 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 triplet. These triplets, eighth note triplets, will alternate. So you start with the right, right, left, right, and then left, right, left conveniently enough because this left will technically fall on beat two, which means, say it for me, backbeat, yes. So it means we can accent two and four in the left, which happens to be on the snare drum, wild, I know. So technically this is only a two beat figure. You only have to worry about the first two beats. First half, bell, ghost note, bell, that's first triplet, triplet, and then the second half, accent on the left, tri, per, let, ghost note for that last one. Tripper let. Practice two halves separately, then bring them together. Tripper let. Tripper let. Tripper let. Tripper let. Bit more speed. That's the groundwork done. You get to choose after that point where you want to put your bass drums, but I really like putting them on the first two ride bells of that pattern. So you get. Just holds everything together a little bit more, but you could also do a four to the floor if you like too. And finally, one more hack with that two beat version. The third time you go for the ride bell, if you really want to just step it up a little bit more, get the ride cymbal instead of the bell. So you end up doing two on the bell and then one on the ride cymbal. Just adds another layer, another bit of texture to the groove, make it sound a bit more advanced. And lastly, if you want to take it to that extra, extra level, add a quarter note left foot. B. Very 
nice. Okay, on to groove three. This last groove, on paper, again, isn't overly technical, but I want to potentially introduce you to a new technique which could sort you out for some really nice, tasty, fast bass drums. So let's get the groove down first before we add the fancy thing. Eighth note groove, one and two and three and four and first beat, one E and two and. That's the first half, one E and two and. Beat three and four without the fancy bass drum. So three and four E, three and four E, three and four E, three and four E. And if you want, you can start to maybe even hear in your head where the bass drums come down. Three, did a four E. Three, and a four E. Three, and a four E. Three, and a four E. But how do we get that technique, that bass drum speed down? There's a number of different options, and I have talked about bass drum technique in a previous video that will be linked here. Just a heads up, by the way, if you want all the notation and the lovely stuff that goes along with this video, Feel free to check out the link in the description because we put out free ebooks with every single one of these compilation videos. So without the funky bass drum all together, one E and two and three, four E. One E and two and three, four E. Now, the funky bass drum. And a, and a four. Hold up before we go any further and people get mad at me in the comments. I did make a slight boo-boo here by saying that I am counting this and uh, which would imply that there's 16th notes, you know, three E and uh, but actually these are 32nd note bass drums. So they are actually taking up the space of just the R uh of three. And so when we're playing 32nd notes, instead of trying to count sounds, it might be easier just to kind of feel it and sound it out without the phonetics involved. Just my advice. Three E and uh, three E and uh. Three E and up. How do we do that? Personally, I'm using heel toe technique. So imagine this is your pedal. This is the foot. I am getting two notes by going heel toe. But that doesn't suit everybody because I'm a lady, so I have smaller feet. Therefore, I can fit my heel on the very bottom of the little plate. However, if you've got larger feet, then you're going to want to bring your foot halfway down the pedal ish. It's going to depend on the pedal. You'll lift from the heel, hopefully as per normal. And we're going to get two notes. So instead of just going from the ball of the foot and stomping, we're going to get the toe on the way down to that normal hit, da dum, kind of like that. You're kind of keeping your toe in contact with the pedal board as you do it. Some people would go eh, eh, and run away. We don't want that. So for me, heel, toe. A little bit tricky on this pedal, it's very springy. But for most other normal mortals, you'll go toe, ball of the foot. That, 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 that. A little bit hard in socks as well. The technical side of it will come with time, but it's just a matter of finding things to practice it with, like this groove. One, two, and three, and three are uh, four E. A uh, four E. Bit quicker. So there you have it. Three more rock grooves for you to get stuck into. If you want the notation for all of these grooves, then feel free to check out the free ebook that comes along with each one of these videos from now on. The link is in the description. And if you want to check out all the other videos I've done on different time signatures and soon different fills, ooh, exciting, then feel free to check out the rest on the Love to Learn Drums YouTube channel. I hope you have a fantastic day and big love. Mwah.